Good evening. This is Sleep Chamber, a podcast meant for you to sleep. My voice will hopefully provide a relaxing ambiance for you to drift away into slumber. So please make yourself comfortable and allow my voice to carry you off into the land of dreams. Hopefully. It is what it is. What happens, happens. And as for now, there is nothing we can do. There are puddles everywhere. The sky is gray. People are walking around with umbrellas. The weather is cold. Some people are wearing raincoats. Others are wearing boots. Everyone is carrying an umbrella. The wind is blowing. The trees are swaying. The leaves are wet. The ground is muddy. The rain is coming down hard. The streets are wet. The sidewalks are wet. The cars are wet. The rain is ruining people's hair. People are getting wet. Some people are walking faster to try and stay dry. Others are just walking slowly and getting wet. Some people are running. Everyone is trying to stay dry. I like the rain because it's calming and relaxing. It's also a good time to stay inside and read a book or watch a movie. Plus, rain makes everything smell fresh and new. I also love the sound rain makes when it's hitting the roof or the ground. It's just so peaceful. I think people who don't like the rain just haven't experienced it in the right setting. Rain can be romantic, too. I think it's one of the most beautiful things in the world. There is a monsoon season in Thailand where it rains a lot. Thailand's rainy season usually begins in May and lasts until October. The south and west coasts of the country are the wettest, while the east coast experiences the least amount of rainfall. Bangkok, in the center of the country, has an average rainfall of about 100 centimeters during the rainy season. During this time, thunderstorms and heavy rains are common and flooding is not unusual. How do you think the cloud feels like? Clouds are made up of tiny water droplets. When you touch a cloud, it feels wet. But they look dry and soft. They look comfortable to lie on. 
But if you try to lie on one, you would fall through it. They look like they would feel like cotton though. Have you seen a cottonwood? Cottonwoods trees are in the same family as willows and aspens. The seeds have fluffy white hair on them that looks like cotton. And when you touch the seeds, they feel like cotton too. So I think clouds would feel like lying on a bed of cotton. But instead of being warm and soft, they would be cold and wet. They would be like lying on a bed of cold, wet cotton. Wet cotton can feel clammy and uncomfortable. It can also be difficult to work with when wet. If you're working with wet cotton, it's best to wring it out as much as possible before continuing. Otherwise, the fabric will be difficult to manipulate and will take longer to dry. There are a lot of fabrics to choose from, but there are a few that you should avoid. Silk and polyester are two of the most common fabrics. They are both comfortable and look nice, but they are not very durable. They are also not very breathable, so they can make you sweat a lot. Cotton is a good fabric to choose. It is very durable and it is also very breathable. It is also a good choice for people who are allergic to polyester. Linen is another good fabric to choose. It is very strong and it is also very breathable. It is also a good choice for people who are allergic to polyester. The best fabric for a suit is wool. It is very strong and it is also very breathable. It is also a good choice for people who are allergic to polyester. When you are choosing a suit, make sure that you try it on first. You should also make sure that you get the right size. The right size is important because if it is too small, it will be uncomfortable, and if it is too big, it will be difficult to move around in. The right size is important, because if it is too small, it will be uncomfortable, and if it is too big, it will be difficult to move around in, period. I once met a cat that was wearing a suit. It was a very dapper cat, and it looked like it was ready for a day at the office. I have no idea why the cat was wearing a suit, but it was a very strange sight. The cat didn't seem to be bothered by the fact that it was wearing clothes, and it seemed to be enjoying the attention it was getting from all the people who were stopped to stare at it. I have no idea where the cat came from or where it was going, but it was definitely one of the most unusual things I've ever seen. I can only imagine what the cat's owner must have been thinking when they decided to put a suit on their pet. It must have been one of those days where they were feeling particularly creative, or maybe they were just trying to make their cat stand out from the rest. Either way, it was a very interesting sight, and I'll never forget the time I met a cat in a suit. 
One day when I walked into a cafe, I saw a man sitting in the corner with a cup of coffee and a book. He looked up at me as I walked in, and I saw that he had kind eyes. I smiled at him and he smiled back. I ordered my coffee and sat down at the table next to him. We started talking and I found out that his name was John. He was a writer and he was working on a new novel. We talked for a while about books and writing. Eventually, we started talking about other things and we found out that we had a lot in common. We talked for hours, and it was one of the best conversations I've ever had. At the end of the day, we exchanged numbers and promised to keep in touch. I walked out of the cafe feeling really happy. I was glad I had taken the time to talk to John. The book he was writing was published last week. It's a story about his childhood and how he became a writer. The book is called The Life and Times of a Writer. In the book, he talks about his early years growing up in a small town in upstate New York. He talks about how he loved to read and write, and how he always wanted to be a writer. He talks about how he went to college and got his degree in English, and how he eventually became a writer. In one chapter he writes about a weird dream he had when he was a kid, where he was being chased by a giant giraffe. The giraffe was dancing salsa. The giraffe looked very graceful as it danced the salsa. It was moving its hips and its neck in a fluid movement that was mesmerizing to watch. The giraffe seemed to be enjoying itself immensely, and the onlookers were enjoying the show as well. The giraffe salsa dancing was a joy to behold, and it was clear that the giraffe was having a great time. After the dancing stopped, the giraffe received a round of applause from the onlookers. It was a wonderful performance, and the giraffe was a natural dancer. I don't know how that was related to his writing career. One of my friends once said, Actions speak louder than words. This is a very popular saying that is often used to encourage people to do something instead of just talking about it. It means that it is better to actually do something than just talk about doing it. I talk a lot. I never shut up. My friends say that I have verbal diarrhea. I just love to talk. I can talk about anything and everything. I'm the type of person who will start talking to strangers just to strike up a conversation. I'm also a big fan of gossip. Some people might find me annoying because I never stop talking, but I really enjoy it. I get a rush from hearing my own voice and sharing my thoughts and opinions. 
It's just how I'm wired. If you can't stand people who talk a lot, then you probably won't enjoy spending time with me. However, if you're the type of person who loves a good conversation, then we'll get along just fine. I don't remember any particular conversation that stands out as being my best, but I generally enjoy talking with people who are easy to talk to, have a good sense of humor, and are interested in learning about other people and cultures. I had a great conversation with a friend recently where we talked about our favorite books, movies, and TV shows. We also talked about our families and what it was like growing up. It was a really fun conversation and I felt like I got to know her a lot better. I also had a great conversation with a coworker recently where we talked about our favorite foods and restaurants. We also talked about our hobbies and what we like to do in our free time. If I were to start a restaurant, it would be called The Hungry Hiker. The menu would consist of appetizers, baked garlic bread, chicken wings nachos, soups, tomato bisque, chicken noodle, Minestrone. Entrees. Fettuccine Alfredo. Spaghetti and meatballs. Pizza. Salads. Caesar salad, Greek salad, chef salad, desserts, tiramisu, cheesecake, chocolate cake, We wouldn't have tables, just blankets like a picnic. The atmosphere would be very casual and relaxed. There would be a fireplace outside for people to roast marshmallows. The restaurant would be located in a mountain town near a popular hiking trail. The Hungry Hiker would be the perfect place to stop for a bite after a long day of hiking. The restaurant would be open year-round. In the winter, the fireplace would be lit and there would be a warm and cozy feeling inside. In the summer, the doors and windows would be open to let in the fresh mountain air. The decor would be rustic with hiking memorabilia on the walls. It would have paintings of wild animals. The paintings might show lions, tigers, elephants, and other animals in their natural habitats. I heard a story about a hiker and a snow lion. The hiker was walking through the mountains when he came across a snow lion. The lion was blocking his path and looked very angry. The hiker didn't know what to do, so he just stood there and waited. The lion said calmly, I'm not going to hurt you. I just want to talk. 
The hiker was surprised but happy to hear this. He said, okay, I'm listening. The lion explained. I'm tired of being hunted. Every day, I have to run and hide from humans who want to kill me. I'm just trying to live my life, but it's getting harder and harder. I don't know how much longer I can do this. The hiker felt sorry for the lion and said, I'm sorry to hear that. How can I help? The lion thought for a moment and said, I'm not sure. But it would be nice if humans could just leave me alone. The hiker nodded and said, I'll do what I can to help. I promise. The lion sat down and looked at the hiker. Thank you. I appreciate it. The hiker continued walking. The hiker continued walking until he reached the summit of the mountain. From the summit, he had a breathtaking view of the valley below. He could see the river winding its way through the valley and the trees and fields that surrounded it. He could also see the town in the distance, with its houses and shops. The hiker stood there for a long time, taking in the view. I met the hiker later that day at a pub. He picked up a knitting kit, a skein of yarn, and a pair of knitting needles from a nearby table. You met, I asked, pleased. Oh, yes. My mother taught me. I've always enjoyed it. Do you? I've never tried, I admitted. He looked at me with a quizzical expression. I find that hard to believe. You strike me as a woman who's tried everything at least once. Thank you. I think you're very perceptive. He smiled. I hope I am. It's a handy talent to have, if you ask me. You never know when you might need it. I'll have to take your word for that. He pulled out a chair for me, then drew up another for himself. Once we were seated, he opened the kit and handed it to me. I'm going to teach you to knit, if you'd like. I took the kit and studied it. I wouldn't want to cause you any trouble. No trouble at all, he chuckled. I've been wanting an excuse to teach you something. It's the only way I can think of to get you to sit still long enough to talk to me. I laughed. Is that so? 
Yes. You're always rushing off somewhere. I'm not usually so busy. Maybe not, but you seem to have a lot on your mind. I do. I closed the kit and placed it on the table. I have a lot to think about these days. Such as... I frowned, not sure if I wanted to tell him about my mother's illness. It didn't seem like the sort of thing one discussed with a casual acquaintance. Before I could decide what to say, he spoke again. I apologize for prying. You don't have to tell me if you don't want to. It's all right. I took a deep breath. My mother is ill. I've been spending a lot of time with her lately. I'm sorry to hear that. His expression was sincere. Is it serious? It's hard to say. The doctors don't seem to know what's wrong with her. That must be difficult for you. I nodded. It is. I worry about her a lot. And your father. He's not in the picture. I see. He was silent for a moment. Then he said, if you ever need to talk, I'm a good listener. Thank you. I smiled at him. I might take you up on that one day. I hope you do. He picked up the knitting kit and handed it to me. In the meantime, let's see if we can get you started on that scarf. He taught me how to knit a scarf. I chose the colors red and yellow. He started by teaching me how to hold the yarn and needles and then showed me how to make a slit knot. After that, he showed me how to do the knit stitch and then the purl stitch. He told me that most scarves are made with just knit and purl stitches, but that I could get creative and add other stitches if I wanted to. Once I had the hang of the knit and purl stitches, he showed me how to do the increases and decreases that would shape the scarf. He told me that I could make the scarf as long or short as I wanted, and that I could make it as wide or narrow as I wanted, too. He showed me how to cast off when I was finished, and then helped me weave in the ends. I gave the scarf to my neighbor's cow and it suited her perfectly. Cows are wonderful creatures. They are gentle and loving, and they provide us with milk and beef. Cows are also great for the environment. 
They help keep the grass short, and their dung provides nutrients for the soil. Cows are a vital part of the agricultural ecosystem. The ecosystem is funny because it is always changing. For example, a new species of plant or animal could come into an ecosystem, which could change the way the ecosystem functions. Or, a change in the climate could cause a certain species of plant or animal to die out, which would also change the ecosystem. In short, the ecosystem is always changing, and it is always fascinating to study. I used to study a lot when I was in school. I would spend hours at my desk, poring over my books and taking notes. I was a straight a student, and I always made sure to be prepared for my tests. I wonder who came up with tests. They are the worst. Someone told me once that colors does not look the same to different people. His name was Joe. Kyo was a great guy. He always had a smile on his face and was always willing to help out. He was a great friend and always had your back. Kyo was the kind of guy that would give you the shirt off his back if you needed it. He gave me his shirt once. It didn't fit me. I don't think Joe ever knew that. Joe's mother was born in Italy, making Joe partly Italian. But he hated pasta. He was always ashamed of the fact that he hated pasta. Kyo was ashamed of the fact that he couldn't speak Italian fluently either. Kyo's mother always told him that it was okay to not like pasta and that there were plenty of other things to eat. His mother always told us how he was to grow up in Italy. She said that it was a very different experience from growing up in the United States. Italy feels like the most romantic place in the world, don't you think? I do think that Italy feels like the most romantic place in the world. There is something about the country that makes it feel very romantic and special. I think that a lot of the romance in Italy comes from the fact that the country is so beautiful. There are so many stunning views and locations, and the architecture and history are also very romantic. Additionally, the food and wine in Italy are also very romantic, and I think that the Italians themselves are generally very romantic people. There is a lot of passion in Italy for many things, including food, art, fashion, and music. Italians are known for being very expressive and enthusiastic, and this passion is evident in all aspects of their culture. From the way they prepare and enjoy their food, to the way they dress and carry themselves, Italians exude a sense of passion that is unique and infectious. Even their language is filled with emotion and expressive gestures. So it's no wonder that when Italians get together, whether it's for a family meal, a night out on the town, or just a casual conversation, the result is always a lively and spirited exchange. I tried to learn Italian once, 
but I found it very difficult. I gave up after a few weeks. I can still remember a few words and phrases, but that's about it. I would like to try again someday, though. A phrase I remember is, Vore imparer el italiano, mai difficile. Which means, I would like to learn Italian, but it is difficult. I also remember, my space, non parlo bene italiano. Which means, I'm sorry, I don't speak Italian well. And, parli in please. Which means, do speak English. That's all the Spanish I know. I went to a salsa club once and met a girl there. I asked her to dance and she said yes. We danced together for a few songs and then I asked her for her phone number. She said that she didn't have a phone. I was surprised and asked her how she gets around without a phone. She said that she uses a pay phone when she needs to make a call, and she uses a friend's phone when she needs to text. I thought that was really interesting and I asked her if I could send her a letter instead. She said that would be fine, and she gave me her address. I wrote her a letter a few days later, and I included my phone number in it. A few weeks went by and I didn't hear from her, so I assumed that she wasn't interested. I was wrong. I received a letter from her a few weeks later. We started writing letters to each other. Once she wrote me this really long letter and I read it, and I was so touched by it. She wrote, I'm so glad that I met you at the salsa club. I never would have thought that I would find someone there that I would be so compatible with. I really enjoy spending time with you and getting to know you better. I hope that we can continue to write to each other and get to know each other even better. I think you're a really special person and I'm really glad that we met. I wrote back to her and told her how much I appreciated her letter and how touched I was by it. I told her that I felt the same way about her and I was really glad that we had met too. We continued to write to each other for a few months and then we decided to meet in person. We met at a coffee shop and we talked for hours. It was so great to finally meet her in person and to be able to talk to her face to face. She told me a story about how she had recently gone on a trip to visit her grandparents and she had to take a bus. She said that she was really nervous about taking the bus by herself, but she did it and it was fine. The bus driver had been very nice to her. I feel like I only ever met nice bus drivers. Except for that one time when I was taking the bus in Lebanon and the bus driver was smoking and blew the smoke in my face. That was not a pleasant experience. 
But other than that, I have met some really nice bus drivers. One time, a bus driver in New York helped me carry my luggage up the stairs because I was struggling. That was really nice of him. Another time, a bus driver in Italy helped me find my stop because I was lost. So, overall, I have had some really great experiences with bus drivers. They have always been really nice to me. Anyway, me and the salsa girl kept writing letters to each other. We continued to write letters to each other for a while. But then she moved to another city and we lost touch. She told me about her move, of course. And I got her new address, but maybe my letter got lost in the mail. I miss writing letters. It was really fun. But now we just keep in touch via social media. It's not the same, but it'll have to do. I'm on so many social medias I can barely keep up Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, Tumblr. I'm even on some I don't really understand. But that's just the world we live in, I guess. The internet has taken over. Maybe I should build my own social media. That could be fun. It could be analog social media. Where you write letters to people. And send them in the mail. That would be so cool. I should totally do that. What would it be called? Analog book. No, that's not it. Post book. Yes, I like that. Post book. It's a social media where you write letters to people and send them in the mail. I'm gonna make it. It's gonna be great. So Postbook will be for everyone that is sick of social media. I should start drawing a logo. Maybe a design of a pen and a letter I for ink would be appropriate. Or a simple abstract design in black and white. Or a design that incorporates both an image and the company name. There are many possibilities. It depends on what you want the logo to communicate about your company. If you want a professional and sleek logo, then a simple design would be best. If you want a playful and fun logo, then a design with more color and personality would be appropriate. I knew a designer that made the best logos in the world. He designed logos for Flower Poot, Apron Macron and other huge brands. You heard about Apron Macron, right? They make and sell the best aprons in the world. 
The aprons are so good, you'll never want to take them off. I highly recommend this designer. His name is Steve Maprom. You can find his website at the internet, I think. I got one of his aprons as a Christmas present. And I wear it all the time. I highly recommend Steve Mapron. He's the best. Besides doing the best aprons in the world, Steve was also great at baseball. He played all the time growing up and even played in college. Steve was drafted by the Baltimore Orioles in the fifth round of the 1971 Major League Baseball drive aft. However, he never made it to the majors. He played in the minor leagues for a few years before he was forced to retire due to an arm injury. Even though he never made it to the majors, Steve is still considered one of the best players to come out of his hometown. He was inducted into the city's Sports Hall of Fame in 2006. Steve is a great example of how you can be successful at something, even if you don't make it to the very top. He worked hard at baseball and was rewarded with a successful career, even though it didn't quite turn out the way he wanted it to. You can learn a lot from Steve's story especially if you're pursuing your own dreams. No matter what you do in life, always give it your best effort and don't give up, even if things don't go exactly the way you wanted them to. You never know where you might end up. When Steve ended his baseball career, he started making aprons. He often say that he is inspired by his sport career. The discipline, the hustle, and the dedication it takes to be a professional athlete is what drives him to be the best apron maker in the world. Just like in baseball, Steve gives 110% to his aprons. He puts his heart and soul into every single one, and it shows. If you're ever in the market for an apron, make sure to check out Steve's website. I have a surprise for you actually. Steve is here in the studio. Welcome Steve. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you here. So Steve, why don't you tell us a little bit about your aprons? What makes them so special? My aprons are special because I put a lot of heart and soul into each and every one. I take the time to make sure that every detail is perfect, and I only use the highest quality materials. I really care about my customers, and I want them to have the best possible experience when they use my aprons. That's great, Steve. Tell us something about yourself, Steve. I am a father of four and a grandfather of six. I have been married for over 30 years. Wow. 30 years. Do you have any wisdom about being married you would like to share? I believe that communication is key in any relationship, but especially in marriage. 
you need to be able to talk to your spouse about anything and everything and be able to really listen to them as well. Also, it's important to always keep the lines of communication open, even when things are going well. That way, if anything does come up, you can address it right away. I also think it's important to make time for each other, even when life gets busy. It's so easy to let other things take precedence over your relationship, but it's important to remember that your spouse should be your number one priority. Making time for each other, even if it's just a few minutes a day, can make a big difference. Finally, I believe that it's important to always show your spouse love and appreciation. A little bit of effort can go a long way in making your spouse feel loved and appreciated. I think those are the most important things when it comes to being married. Thank you, Steve. And four kids, tell us more. I have four kids, all grown up now. My oldest is 28 and my youngest is 22. I also have six grandchildren. I absolutely love being a father and grandfather. It's the best feeling in the world. I'm so lucky to have such a great family. I'm sure your kids and grandkids love you too. What is the best part about being a father and grandfather? There are so many great parts, it's hard to choose just one. I think one of the best parts is just being able to watch my kids and grandkids grow up and watching them achieve their goals. It's also great to be able to share my life with them and to have that special bond that only comes with being a family. I'm really blessed to have such a great family. How did you and your wife meet? We met at a party. We were both at a party and started talking. It was a birthday party. She actually came up to me and asked me to help her solve a crossword. Did I ever tell you that I am the greatest crossword solver in the world? Once I solved the crossword in two seconds. Wow, Steve, that is impressive. Two seconds, is that really the truth? Yes, it is. I don't believe you. Why not? Well, it just seems like something that someone as smart as you wouldn't be able to do. I don't think that's a very good reason. I guess you're right. I'm the greatest crossword solver in the world. I still don't believe you. Let's agree to disagree, okay? You're probably just saying that because you're modest. I'm not modest. I think you are. I'm not modest, I'm the greatest crossword solver in the world. Okay, Steve, I believe you. Good. 
I need to leave now. I'm going to solve a crossword. Okay, see you later. Wow, Steve, everybody. I always dreamed about meeting Steve. Another dream I have is that I own a beautiful farm that is surrounded by mountains. The farm has a big red barn and a big green field. The farm also has a pond with a waterfall. I have a lot of animals on the farm, including horses, cows, pigs, chickens, and ducks. I also grow a lot of crops, including corn, wheat, and oats. Then I sell my crops and animals at the farmer's market and make a lot of money. I am very happy on my farm and love my life. Someday I will make this dream a reality. However, I am allergic to many animals. So, I may have to find a different dream. I dreamed a weird dream last night. It was about a very nice little fish that was my best friend, and the fish could fly me anywhere in the world. I was flying around with the fish, and we were having so much fun. Then, all of a sudden, the fish turned into a big dragon. The dragon was so big and scary, but it was still my best friend. We were flying around and having fun when the dragon started breathing fire. The fire was so hot and it burned everything in its path. I was so scared, but I knew I had to help my best friend. So I grabbed a bucket of water and threw it on the dragon, and the dragon turned back into a fish. The dream was so weird, but it was also really fun. I'm not sure what it means, but it was definitely a strange dream. Are you asleep yet? If not, Maybe you should try counting sheep. Once when I was counting sheeps, I got up to 4,872 before I finally fell asleep. I don't think I've ever counted that high before or since. It was quite a night. I named one of the sheeps. Dolly after the famous sheep that was cloned. The others I just named after random things that came into my head. Butterfly, rainbow, unicorn, that sort of thing. It was a very eventful night, all things considered. I'm not sure why I'm telling you this, but I guess it's just because I can. Dolly is a good name for a sheep. Because it's short and easy to remember. I'm sure the other sheep had names too, but I don't remember what they were. Have you seen the movie Dolly? The movie is based on a book by the same name, and it tells the story of a girl who is sent to live with her father and stepmother in a small town in Maine. Dolly is a very precocious child, and she quickly befriends the local librarian, Miss Annie. 
Miss Annie helps Dolly to find her place in the small town, and she also helps Dolly to learn to read. Dolly is a very smart girl, and she soon learns to read at a very high level. She also starts to write her own stories, and she even starts to write a book about her life in the small town. The movie is very heartwarming. Heartwarming, isn't that a weird word? Anyway, I would definitely recommend the movie to anyone who is looking for a feel-good movie. I'm not sure if the book is still in print, but I'm sure you could find it used somewhere. Once I read a book, I can't remember the title or the author of the book, but it was about a woman who was in a car accident and she ended up in a coma. She had to learn how to walk and talk again and she had to relearn everything. The book might be called In a Coma or something similar. Anyway, it had a happy ending. The woman woke up from her coma and was able to fully recover. I don't remember much else about the book, but I enjoyed reading it. Did I ever tell you about the time I went swimming during the night in a lake in Italy? It was dark but very warm. I was visiting my friend in Toscany and we decided to go for a nightly adventure. We walked down to the lake and started swimming. It was so refreshing and the water was so clean. And then I got bit by a fish. I screamed and my friend started laughing so hard. We woke up some campers when I screamed. They came down to us and joined in on our night swim. They were traveling as well. It was a couple from Australia that had just arrived to Italy last night. They told us that they had a great time in Italy so far and that the food has been amazing. They also said that the people have been very friendly and helpful. I got so curious because I've never been to Australia. They told us about koala bears. Apparently, they are very friendly creatures that are found in the wild in Australia. They also told us about the Great Barrier Reef, which is the largest coral reef in the world. It is located off the coast of Queensland, Australia. The Great Barrier Reef is a popular destination for scuba diving and snorkeling. The couple from Australia said that they are planning on going scuba diving there soon. I was so fascinated by everything they were telling me, and I really want to go to Australia now. However, I'm scared for sharks. But they told me that there are only a few types of sharks in the Great Barrier Reef, and that they are not dangerous to humans. I'm definitely going to try to go to Australia someday. It sounds like an amazing place. I'm so jealous that they got to go there already. Maybe I should visit Australia and New Zealand this winter. I would love to see Sydney and Auckland. In Sydney, there are numerous things to do in Sydney, Australia. 
Here are just a few examples. Visit the Sydney Opera House. Take a tour of the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Explore the Royal Botanic Gardens. Visit Taranga Zoo. Take a ferry ride to Manly Beach. Wander through the Rocks District. Stroll through Hyde Park. Visit the Art Gallery of New South Wales. Explore the Bondi to Coogee Coastal Walk. I would go and surf on Bondi Beach. Not that I know how to surf, but I definitely want to try it out. I could learn, right? I would also like to learn how to bake sourdough bread. It feels very common to bake bread. Baking bread is a great way to relax and distress. There's something about the process of kneading dough and watching it rise that is very therapeutic. Plus, the end result is a delicious, homemade loaf of bread. If you're interested in learning how to bake sourdough bread, I read a few tips. 1. Start with a simple recipe. There are a lot of complexities that come with baking sourdough bread, so it's best to start with a basic recipe. This will help you get a feel for the process and allow you to troubleshoot any problems that may arise. 2. Make sure your ingredients are fresh. This is especially important when it comes to the yeast. If your yeast is old or expired, it won't work properly and your bread will be dense and heavy. 3. Be patient. Sourdough bread takes time to make, so don't get discouraged if it doesn't turn out perfectly the first time. They said that you just have to keep practicing and you'll eventually get the hang of it. I'm going to start practice to bake bread this weekend. It feels like a good Sunday activity. Anto her good Sunday activity is taking a walk in the park. And also doing laundry. I always do laundry on Sundays. I should probably start doing some laundry now. But it is not Sunday, so... I will just wait. On Sundays I also always go for long walks. I usually take my dog and walk by the water. It's a great way to get some exercise and fresh air. I also like to people watch on my walks and see what everyone is up to on their weekend. People watching is so much fun. I wonder what people think when they see me, when there are people watching. I've heard that I look like a celebrity, but people can never figure out who. I've also been told that I give off a vibe that is either intriguing or off-putting, depending on the person. I'm not sure what to make of these things, but they're interesting to think about. Do people see me as approachable? 
as someone who is friendly, as someone who is interesting. I guess it depends on the person. The word vibe feels like a very young person's word. I would not use it to describe someone, but maybe that is just me. I am not sure what people think of me when they see me. I just hope that I come across as a nice person. I think that is all anyone can really hope for. We all have different energy that we put out into the world and some people are just more drawn to that than others. I try to be a good person and I hope that comes across to people. I think that is all anyone can really do. Just be yourself and be the best person you can be. The world is full of so many different kinds of people and we should all try to respect one another.